very cool. Hey, it's John Bolger with Premier Guitar. We're in Nashville, Tennessee. I'm with Jared Matson of Matson 2. Jared, thanks so much for joining good us, to be man. here, bro. Yeah, yeah man. good to see you. Okay, let's start with this crazy guitar. Tell me all about it. This hails from uh, Japan, and cool. I found it on eBay. It's a brand called Telestar, which uh, Eastwood is starting to reissue, strangely enough. Oh, but cool. I've been using this thing for like 10 years. And uh, Any idea what year this was made? This is a, as far as I know, it's a 1959. Wow. Which sounds kind of crazy that they're making these in 59, but. Right. Yeah. And so they only made guitars from, I think, 57 to 59. Oh. And then they switched to making phone parts. Oh, really? So the guitar yeah. industry didn't quite work out for them. Sure. I can see why. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. too, too bizarre, man. Yeah. But yeah. For, a, for a band like us, Mattson 2, that uses looping, yeah. it's perfect because you do the bass line. Use a guitar. Yeah, you're a master of that. That is oh, so thanks, cool man. to watch you build that loop right here. <laughs> right okay, on. so what modifications have you made to this? So I got these Seymour Duncan mini humbuckers. I got the guitar version and I got the bass version. My friend Pat Jones and his wife uh, Laura were the ones who customized uh, the guitar. Okay. And these were the original pickups back here, just total garbage pickups. This, sure. This one doesn't even, there's no sound. Yeah. So. Yeah. This is just for show, it's broken. Yeah. Um, and then we just customized the pit guard. Originally we had little pit guards right here and right here where you see the holes on. Okay. At. Um, and then we just got the, the, the neck set up. Did that take it quite a bit of work to make it like a playable instrument? It did. When I, when I played it, when I first bought it, I was basically playing it because it was functional. Yeah. Because it performed a function, but not because it sounded good. Yeah. Um, now well, I, I think it sounds really good. Yeah, it sounds great. Yeah. So when you first, do you remember what you paid for it back in the I think I paid like 900 bucks or something. Yeah. A little, little higher than maybe I should have paid, but. Yeah, for a non-working guitar. Mind. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> a little higher than you want to play for a non-working guitar, but. <laughs> wow, it's, well, it's great. I mean, you rolled the dice and it's become like this huge part of your whole sound. It is. So. It's, it's very much important to the sound. Yeah. What strings are you running on it? These ones, I'm just doing a regular Ernie Ball slinkies. Okay. And then these are the Ernie Ball flat wounds. And I use like a 10 gauge because okay. when you go too high with this thing, it doesn't, it doesn't have a lot of sustain and it yeah. doesn't pick up a lot of the, the nuances that the pedals are giving it. So I used to play with 11s and 12s, but yeah. I noticed that this guitar ha handles best with 10s. Yeah, okay. So I go for that. Yeah, very cool. So you're on that the majority of the time, but yeah. when you're not on that, you're playing yeah. a... When I'm not doing that, I'm playing this, this brand new uh, 50s American strap, which oh. I love. Very cool. And when you're on the Strat, then... When I'm on the Strat, I, I no longer have the bass, right? Yeah. So I, the bass is an integral part to the sound. So I use this uh, poly octave generator. Oh, right cool. Here. Yeah, the, yeah. The reason why I like it is because you could turn the dryness down. So some of the dryness is still on there. Yeah. But if I take it all the way out, then it's just... Yeah, sounds great. So if that, that same bass line I was doing. When it's like played through the house and through the subwoofers, like you, you don't miss the bass at all. Sure. So. Yeah, it sounds, that sounds equally great. Doesn't look as cool, but sounds, yeah. <laughs> sounds equally great. Okay, so you're out with two guitars, and this one too, Ernie Balls. Uh, this tens. one has a Diodario flat wounds on it. Oh, and really? They're, they're, uh, they actually go down to nines now. Oh, okay. So these are, I just wanted to try them out. I, I played flat ones on my hollow bodies, mm -hmm. and uh, a guitar player I love, Hungarian guy, Gabor Zsabo, when he played his Strat, he put flat ones on it, and mm -hmm. I loved his tone. So I also like the sound of dead strings because they're not so bright. Yeah. I, I like a darker sound. So these give you that right away, okay. rather than having to wait a month sure. for the pedals to, to die. Yeah. I mean, for but, the strings to die. Sure, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Okay, well, two guitars, and then you're running two amps as well. That's um, right. The Princeton, Princeton Reverb, and that's, is that the newer? Uh, it's the reissue, yeah. yeah. Love oh, that thing. Is it like the 68 reissue? 68 reissue, okay. exactly, it just came out. So I, I love this Princeton because it's so small, and it packs a punch yeah. with, the, with the tone and whatnot. And uh, when I'm traveling in our little van, I don't like to have too, too much gear. So sure. I take that little guy, and it sounds just like my Deluxe, yeah. maybe even better. Um, 
Yeah. I love and the sound of that. You thing. and your brother aren't particularly loud anyway, so it works. You That's know, right. Yeah, it works well. Some people think we're loud. But. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then I, I pair that with the ZT lunchbox. Okay. Which surprisingly is 200 watts. Wow. And it's handmade in Berkeley, which I love. My friend uh, Jeff Parker from Tortoise hooked me up with that one. And I use the, I throw all the bass channels and the loops through that amp. Wow. And you with just, that tiny you, speaker, is it that's like, right. a, like a four inch speaker or? Yeah, it's this guy. Yeah, it's like five or four inches. Cow. So that, but that's handling the bottom end. <laughs> But it holds the tone really well. Yeah. And uh, if you get a good front of house, it'll make that thing sound like a huge amp. Sure. So that's great. Okay. So two amps, two guitars, and then let's get into the pedal board. Let's let's do it. The first one I'm going into is my MXR phaser, which I love. You bet. It's an actual. It's an actual vintage one. I think oh, it's really? the '80s, maybe. Oh really? Wow, cool. And I like it because it only has one knob. Sure. Which. Is I don't like to think too hard. So And I run that through the Strymon, so that kind of puts a, a little bit of compression on it to keep it contained, because one problem with these MXRs is they go wild. Yeah. So I, I run it through here to the dark side, I'll show you what that is in a sec, but through this is the this is the secret weapon right here, the Strymon Deco. So what I like about the deco is you get that tape saturation. You could go crazy with it. And you could, I like throwing the delay up sometimes, if I want to get real Robert Fripp with it. Yeah, that's cool. But I keep this one pretty simple, I just like it to have a nice little texture, so. Do that, then I got my, my poly octave generator. Those sound great. Yeah, man, they I are, love that thing. Yeah. Okay, so. Um, what I didn't show you is this guy. Yeah, that's the second in in the chain. Exa what what is it? You know, this is. I'm still trying to figure this thing out, but it's the Keeley Dark Side, and what I like to use it as is a very subtle bed of like shifting the tone. about it is it responds to your touch so if I go soft or so that's why I like it I yeah. also like it because the fuzz So you're getting your dirt either from the fuzz or from the saturation on the on the Strymon, right? That's right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. And then I guess the other one that we got to talk about is this guy, which I love. The Caverns. It's also a Keeley. Yeah, Keeley and makes great stuff. They're yeah, just great pedals. That's right. I like it because you have the blend. You have the blend knobs here, where you can either have a ton of ton of what this side's delay, yeah. this side's reverb. notice is there's no uncontrolled feedback squeal so I have the feedback all the way up but it's not getting out of control I got this guy, which is just the Standard tuner. Standard the in industry, yeah, the Boss Chromatic. That's right, but it, powering the pedals. And then one thing, so it bypasses when you start tuning, but I have the, this loop pedal out here now. So when I'm tuning, I don't, I don't like there to be silent, so oh. this will keep going as yeah. I tune. Yeah, that's a good idea. So you can be making noise. That's right. 
It's muted. That's great. Yeah, and then I guess the last one's this guy. Okay, so you have two loop stations. That's right. H how are you using both of them? So two loop stations. You'll notice the loop that I started with. There's another part of the song though. Yeah. So I can't delete that because I need to go back to the A section. There's oh, okay. a B section. So another loop. you to shift the composition sure more you know that's that's too cool and then the selector is that's right that's a whirlwind yeah and so top of the line I'm splitting my bass amp and my guitar amp okay so basically my bass amp is running through the a channel and all all the pedals are going into the into the input yeah so that both amps are getting the pedals um, but only the loops are going into the a channel okay so that means only the bass amp or whatever's plugged into the A channel is looping. And that's going through the little lamp and then the guitar is going through the Princeton. That's right. So the guitar is on, I'm sorry, flip that. That's, that's all in the B. I used to route it to the A. That's what yeah. I thought it did, but that's actually the B. So the A is only the guitar. Yeah. So the guitar amp, nothing that's going into the guitar amp is going to be looped. Okay. That's all the melody, all the vocal, yeah. vocal type of tracks. But all the loops are going through the, wow. through the bass amp channel. Yeah. Wow, that is... <laughs> That, I bet there's a bit of a learning curve in making that all work. Took about 10 years. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Took about 10 years and I almost got it. Yeah. That's right. I bet there's, are there any scary moments during gigs where it all just goes to hell? Yes. Yeah. We were, and it, I'm thankful it wasn't my fault. Um, I had the Roland 20 XL. These are the Roland 30 XLs, uh -huh. which I like the 20 XL more because there's actually a latency with these ones. It's like a, it's like a, 50 millisecond latency, yeah. which, is, which is very noticeable. The 20XL has a dial, which I like more too. But, so I just had to get these though, because there's barely any more 20s left. Mm. Um, my 21, my original one that I had like f since 15 years ago, um, the, whole, the whole sound, everything just failed while we were on stage. So that was horrible. Yeah, um, <laughs> that would be a long, was near the beginning of the gig or it, near the it end? It was in the middle. Ooh. So I had to reroute everything and just plug it on and then keep going with the set. Uh, but I figured out later that it was the board, it was a problem with the board on, uh, the, on, the, on the pedal. So it wasn't exactly my fault or the, the input cable's fault. Yeah. Um, it was purely just because the thing was so old. But only one disaster. Yeah, That's not, in 10 years. It's amazing. <laughs> yeah, you're due for another disaster. <laughs> That's yeah. true. Yeah. So uh, how are you powering all this stuff? I'm uh, just, all yeah, one spots? just one spots. Yeah. I Easy. had a, you know what, it's funny, I had a Voodoo Lab power supply, Yeah. Um, but when I was in China, the sound guys plugged me in so fast that it just exploded. Sure. And just, they just killed it. So yeah. I've been using these ever since. Yeah. That was in, a, no, actually that was in Hong Kong. Okay. Um, so All that's right. not on my board anymore. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, great. Well, hey, I love the whole crazy, trippy experiment. All right, man. Thanks for joining Thanks us. Lot, yeah. Pleasure, man. Luck. Yeah. Pleasure. Awesome. Till next time. Good to be here with you guys. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the latest Rig Rundown. Guess what? Every week we upload a brand new Rig Rundown to PremierGuitar.com a full week before it's available here on YouTube. So to get your gear fix as soon as humanly possible, go to PremierGuitar.com forward slash Rig Rundown. And while you're there, be sure to sign up to get an email notification so you're the first to know as soon as each week's new Rig Rundown is available. Cheers, see you soon.